everyone welcome back to the composition of imagination i am your host and author stevie joe and this is the channel where we talk all about my book series angel of death from locations to plot to characters to book trailers no stone left unturned and of course with me i've got some of my book guardians we've got superman over here and moosey over here and in the last episode, we continued our Murmurs of Murr County discussion about Elias as he is in the first book, in the beginning. So we're going to wrap up that discussion today. So definitely go back to this week's earlier videos. That way you're just all caught up on what we're talking about. So the next time we see Elias in the book is in chapter 18, and that is at Skylar's wedding. He, oh boy. He does show up after all and he sits in the pew with everyone else. So while she's going through her drama behind the scenes, he is blissfully unaware. Well, <laughs> maybe not blissfully, but he is unaware. Is he though? Because I think that's, he that's true, he yeah. I think bliss. I was gonna say, I think he I think he acts like he's unaware. I think he knows exactly because because of that bond that, we talked mm -hmm. about. Yeah, so he very well could. and he was just <clears throat> He's eating. just sitting there just kind of going. He's like, I'm going to bide my time. Wait until the moment's right. So he is waiting for her to walk down the aisle. And I just, if that aside, their bond aside and like what Skylar's going through, I have to ask right off the bat. Do you think that Eli showed up to the wedding with plans to object or get Sky out of the marriage somehow, if she actually did make it down the aisle, and you know, Pastor Noel is like, "Is anybody here gonna object?" Do you think he had plans to stand up and go, "I do, motherfucker"? I yes, I think he would, but it would have been under extreme duress if her aura was screaming, "Yeah, get me out of here." He would do it. Okay, but up to that point no so you don't think it was fully pre-planned yeah i react. mean he he was just doing it to show support for her okay but if he necessary he would stand up okay as it turns out he does not have to do anything himself to call off the wedding because Ezra does all that for him by feeding from cj and infuriating sky she is so angry that she damn near burns down the church. And Eli is literally the only one who can calm her and stop her before someone actually gets hurt. He tells her, everything's fine, it's okay to be scared, but you cannot handle your fear like this, or else you're no better than Ezra, is what he flat out tells her. That seems to either upset her or knock some sense into her one way it or did, the other. It did both. Probably. Mm. Because she starts screaming and she just pounds her fists against him. And he just takes it because he's just like, I, as long as I can just keep her safe, even if it's from herself, I will take this for her. When she calms down, he kisses her forehead and says, okay, why don't you go wait in my car? And so she leaves. Now, in the episodes we did about Sky, we didn't talk about this next part because she was not privy to it. For all we know, Sky actually has no knowledge of what happens next when Eli confronts Ezra. So, before we talk about what actually did happen, I just kind of want to feel out what you think. Do you think Eli ever tells her what he does when he confronts Ezra, or is that a secret he keeps to himself? Oh no, I think I think later on, <clears throat> like later on, sometime between book one and book two, mm -hmm. they have a conversation. Okay, so because, he's very because, open with her. Yeah, because I think uh, not totally right about the history, but no, about the fact that they know each other. Okay. And uh, because 
a spoiler, you know, in the later books, you know, they kind of talk a little bit mm -hmm. about a little bit about their relationship. Yes, and we will talk about that in this series. Yeah. So that's how I, that's how I figured between book one and book two. Okay. He probably one afternoon just sit there and said, "Yeah, you know, we I want to come clean a little we bit. We go back." <laughs> Okay. Well, that and she heard a little bit about those two during the fight. Exactly. Okay. Here's what happens when Sky walks out of the church. Eli and Ezra interact for the very first time in the book. And the first thing Elias says to him is, Ezra, my old friend. And he makes a comment that he thinks Ezra has been avoiding him over the last few years. Of course, Ezra doesn't respond to that and just threatens Eli to get out of his way or else. And Eli laughs it off the way that, you know, we all kind of do where we're like, you ain't going to do shit. And Ezra tries to attack him. Eli appears to be faster, though, and he grabs a shard of glass from a shattered stained glass window, because Sky really did almost damn near destroy this church, <laughs> and he drives it into Azra's chest just on the other side of his heart. Ah. He helped Azra fall to the ground gently so that the, the his heart doesn't get punctured by it, and he warns Azra, next time, I won't miss. And then Eli leaves, and he takes Sky back to his house. Why did Eli let Ezra live? Would it really have been that bad if he'd have killed him right then and there? He's not a killer. You don't think so? Uh, okay. He's not a killer anymore. Okay. You don't know about his past as much. Oh, we're okay. going, uh, we're going Kenshin territory. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Okay. But he's just not a killer like that, at least not now. Okay. I think that, that could have been. Like, you he could have been. I, I think it's also a, a situation of as much as you can't stand the guy, you know, technically, you know, Ezra and Sky are still together, so he didn't necessarily want to take him out. And, like, hurt and, Sky. Yeah. Even though it seems like she probably wouldn't. Like, at this point, you think, well, would she really care? But you never know. She might, if he actually did. So, I think wow. both of you okay, never. are kind of right. <laughs> so, then we move to chapter 19. And Eli and Skye are back at his place. He picks her up in his arms, starts to take her inside. But Ezra comes barreling down the driveway. Ta he totally, like, completely totals his uh, um, Eli's Porsche as it collides with Ezra's truck. And it, but instead of losing his cool, Eli banters with Ezra for a bit about how, oh, I see your manners have gotten worse over time, but your sense of humor hasn't changed a single bit. Why do you think he handles the situation this way? Is Eli really that cocky of an asshole that he feels he can taunt his opponent? Oh, yeah. Or do you think it's more like an inside joke between them that we aren't privy to? No. He's, a, a, but he's also using it as a way to diffuse the situation. Because he could go in completely ticked off. Yeah. I mean, because my car got destroyed by, you know, a douchebag. Yes. And everything. So instead, he looks at it as a way to disarm the situation, but also show the fact that he is the better man and will destroy him if necessary. Because if you notice in the in the banter, yeah. you know, most of Ezra's uh, statements were basically something, you know, like, oh, fuck off, a, a, simple, a, a simpleton with almost no vocabulary could come up with. Yeah. Yeah. He just knows that he has the upper hand, so he knows he could say what he wants. Cause okay. Well, keep that in mind because that does come into play here in a second. So, regardless of why Eli actually is so lighthearted about it when Ezra gets there, and I say lighthearted, but he... I mean, he's just yeah. not, he's not handling he, it the way I think he, we would. He, Eli does, though, get very serious 
when he tells Ezra, because Ezra says a comment like, you know, I'm not leaving here without my wife. And Eli's like, all right, now I'm getting serious here. <laughs> Sky is not your wife, and you will not be taking her against her will. Eli is silenced for a minute, though, because Sky has had enough of them doing their thing. She's like, fuck this. I'm going to take care of it myself. So she basically opens up the earth between them. She's on one side of it with Eli. Azer's over there with CJ. There's more distance between them. And Eli just kind of lets Skye do what she feels she needs to do in order to reprimand Azra how she sees fit. Here's a really interesting question about that. And it kind of goes to what you had just said about he knows he can get away with it and that kind of thing. Do you think Eli is standing at the wayside because he wants Sky to be responsible for hurting Ezra? And what I mean by that is, does Eli believe that if he hurts Ezra, Sky will never forgive him, but if if he lets Sky do all the dirty work, he can swoop in and be the good guy? Do you think that's his plan? Oh, that's a that's an interesting take on it. It is. It's both. <laughs> Pot. It, no, it, it's actually both because if he were to actually take it and and you know basically do the kill shot, yeah. she could once she calms down sit there and hold some animosity about it. Mm -hmm. But by standing back and showing support for her while she's sitting there, let him let, have it. Well, I wouldn't even call it that. I think it was just a, a display. Yeah. Because really, if she wanted to kill them, they, they should have just let the ground beneath them fall. Yeah. And then made sure the ground above them closed Yeah. Down. Yeah. So, it was just a display of power. It wasn't really... It, she was so unfocused that mm -hmm. really, she could have destroyed the entire Murr County. And... Nothing would really come of it. And that's a good way of pointing that out because I think that's very accurate. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah you agree? So that's why I said it goes back to what you were saying because are we starting to see kind of a conniving side to Elias? A little strategic side. Well, he him. might have been sitting back also just to see, maybe just to look and see what kind of power she really had. That's a good point as well. And if necessary... To step in to calm her down before she like killed the entire family and yeah the merlins that's a good point too so now it's interesting as we talk about all that because eli does speak up when azra gets burned by a fire that sky started and he continues a little bit of that banter that he started where he says well it appears you're outmatched old friend and isn't that why you chose sky to begin with don't you believe she's the lifeblood with magic strong enough to fight against the devil himself those are questions that eli actually asks to azra and of course, Ezra's anger at it only prompts him to keep pressing the issue. He insinuates that Ezra is what's called the original sin sanguis, which indicates that Ezra only wants Sky's magic and nothing more. Like he has no other feelings for her. In fact, Eli says that they both know that Ezra will not be able to keep her alive during the bloodlust exchange ceremony because it's not part of the deal with a capital D. The deal. What does that mean? What deal is Eli talking about? It's, it could be the deal made that allowed Lucian to sit there uh, have the uh, power over hell. Hmm. With the, and, and split everything up where you have heaven, yeah. earth, Basically, and hell. We're, we're thinking it goes back to the creation of all three realms. Exactly. And, you know, maybe maybe Elias was the deal. Maybe he was the broker that made it happen. And Ezra was part of his team. I don't know. Ugh. That's a good... That's a, scary, that's a scary thought. It is. But it's also a good observation yeah. to kind of think about. So, either way, whatever the deal was... That insinuation gets Eli speared by Azra, 
and almost bitten by him. Luckily, Eli is able to fight him off, and he was saved in a way by Sky striking Ezra with lightning to the point of damn near killing him. And Sky is mm-hmm. concerned that she actually did kill him because she asked him, "Is he dead?" Because um, she couldn't tell if he was breathing or not. Eli really he laughs it off and is just like, "Trust me, it takes more than lightning to kill that asshole." Unfortunately. So then Sky gives Eli the giant diamond ring that Azra gave to her. And this goes back to Monday when we talked about gems. Mm-hmm. So be sure you watch that video. Sky asks Eli to return the diamond to Azra because she can't even look at him anymore. Eli does go and give the diamond back to Azra. And this is another moment where, yes, Sky is watching it happen, but she can't necessarily hear it. So Eli takes that time to say something very interesting to Ezra. He says, it's a shame Ezra uninvites himself so often. Eli, on the other hand, barely has to try and he has a standing invitation, rubbing it in by saying that Skye has a lovely bedroom, by the way which is a place he knows Ezra has never been. It is really (laughs) important here. Eli examines the diamond ring, which we discussed in the Sky video. It's a five-carat ring, so it's really huge. And he speculates that this gem is more precious than Ezra's life, and he better not let it fall into the wrong hand. Which causes Ezra to spit in Eli's face, and Eli just slams the ring against his chest, telling him, we both know it's not coincidence that we should meet again. And Ezra needs to think about how things went down last time, should he try to steal Skye's life. Then Ezra, then Eli rather, takes Skye into his house and the chapter ends and that's also the last time we see Eli in the book. So I'm going to ask a couple questions here about that interaction because it's very important. What is so special about that diamond first of all? That big five carat diamond. Oh that that's uh, that's uh, Ezra's soul. Just like we talked about yeah. in the other I was video. Say it's definitely a life force to somehow. Okay so now what do we think? Because Elias said, think about what happened last time if you try to do this, that again. So what do you think happened last time they were around each other to make Eli warn him that way? That's when the falling out happened. What do you Probably, think Probably, I mean, uh, could have been family member, you know. It, it could, that's the great mystery. Okay. But it also goes to another part. He had the perfect opportunity to destroy Azra. Mm-hmm, he did. And nobody would ha- have held him accountable to that mm-hmm. or blamed him. Mm-hmm. All he had to do was take that gem and crush it. Because the whole town saw yeah. what a shitbag he was. Yeah. All he had to do was crush it, mm-hmm. and yet he returned it. Uh-huh. And you go, Okay. This is the part where the book is actual fantasy. In real life, <laughs> in real life, that ring would have been destroyed. There wouldn't have been this whole, oh, here you go. Make sure you remember. So asking because you're my husband, would you have just destroyed like he's saying in real life, if I was Sky and you were Eli, would you have just destroyed that Probably. gem? Probably. See? So yes. <laughs> yes. Thinking from a male perspective. More than likely, yeah. Yeah. After the crap that that Azra just put Sky through, yeah. seriously? Yeah. There, there's not even a question here. I probably would have called down a few more lightning bolts. <laughs> you know, just to sit there and add more salt to the wound. Yeah. And then where the wound was, take the diamond, slam it down, and then make it explode in his chest. Okay. So one final question based on chapter 19. Given Eli's attitude toward Ezra and the things he seems to know about the Sanguis, do you think that Eli is hiding a sinister side from Skye? And do you think that that bodes very darkly for her future? Oh, yeah. I mean, but everybody has a dark side. I mean, we two sides of a coin. Yeah. 
you know, whatever side we show, there's always going to be that other side that keeps things mysterious. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. And what do you, do you think that bodes darkly for Skylar? Or do you think that's mm -hmm. just the, just nature of human nature and stuff? It it, it could but like it could bode darkly nature yeah yeah creature nature it depends nature. on who who shows up okay you know if it's just Elias and the creatures of Murr County maybe but if we get outside creatures mm -hmm. and mythics and other magic dwellers yeah so to speak. Things could change because, you know, you might have somebody that, you know, knew when Eli had had his dark times. Okay. And say, oh, yeah, it looks like you're, oh, you're still running the con, huh? <laughs> you know? Time will tell on that one. So, that does it for this week. Thank you both so much for contributing to the discussion. <laughs> Starting it off really strong. And thank all of you for watching. We're going to be back next week with more Murmurs of Murr County. And we're going to start talking about Elias as he is whenever we transition to book two, False Idols. Oh so boy. be sure you tune in. We love you and we'll see you next week. Catch up on the Angel of Death series today. The first four entries are now available directly at stevijoauthor.com.